You're watching your turn. If it matters to you, it's important to us. You know, they're the images we will never forget. Black smoke pouring from the Twin Towers in New York. Desperate people running for their lives as the towers collapse, sending a curtain of dust and debris through the streets of lower Manhattan. September 11th, 2001 changed our lives in so many ways. And now with this specter of terrorism hanging over our heads, can we ever feel safe again? That's what our guest is here to talk about today. Javal Aviv is a former Israeli counterintelligence officer who, since 1979, has had his own international security and investigative firm called Interfor. And he's also a special consultant to Congress. He was a lead investigator for the Pan Am investigating the Lockerbie bombing. You have just done so many security things, yes. almost too many to list here. But you have a book called Staying Safe. Yes. And uh, this is really sort of um, an idea on what people can do proactively to try to at least protect your family yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Do what you can as a citizen and not just rely on the government to yes. do these kinds of yes. things. And the thing that hit me when I first started looking at this was that you say that we do have choices. We may not think yes, that we, we do. do, but we do have some choices. Elaborate on that for us a little bit. Well, first of all, we need to understand that terrorism is here to stay. It's not something that have happened as a fluke in 9-11 and will not happen again. Terrorism is here and terrorism will strive here for quite a while. Secondly, we need to understand that our government um, is not ready yet to protect us. Uh, it takes years of hard work to come up with uh, schemes that, that have worked somewhere else uh, and introduce them uh, to the public. What the government hasn't done, and that's why I wrote this book, is really prepare the public to deal with an event. How do you minimize your exposure as a family, as an individual, when you travel, when you work, go to work? And secondly, uh, how do you deal with it the day after? Because the day after is, is a disaster. And if I just go back to 9-11, and 9-11, and many parents took their kids to school, to kindergarten, dropped them off at kindergarten, and went to work, as usual. Um, unfortunately, the event happened, and many, many people could not get out of the building and died in 9-11. Hundreds of kids were stranded at schools because parents have not made any arrangement to pick them up with other relatives, with friends, with neighbors. No one had contingency planning at home as a family. And that struck me as, as a first step. What do we do? How do we educate the public as we've done in Israel? Israel is a country who has had experience or has experience with terrorism for over 50 years, realized very early that the government cannot do it by itself. They have to solicit the public's help. There are 90 million people who go to work every day, 90 million pair of eyes that could report things that are very important if one knows how to report it correctly, if there is somebody who can accept this information correctly and do something with it. And we are light years away from doing that yet. So I thought the best thing to do is to uh, write a book and collect tips, practical tips. They don't cost you any money to do. But if you really become alert and you become security minded, there's a lot of things you can do to minimize your exposure. And then hopefully you won't be in the wrong place in the wrong time and then you can survive it and then you have a plan how to deal the day after. Some of this is, is really basic and one of the first, th first things too in the book is this idea of risk assessment. Yes. Th that by making a choice even on where you live, where Absolutely. you work, Absolutely. That, you, that all figures into your safety as an individual and as a family. So we took a few of those out of the book and we're going to put them up on the screen for you. So these are questions that, that you can ask yourself and here's the first one is location. Where do you work? Where do you live? And tell us why that is so pertinent. It's very important. If you are working or live next to a, a, an area that could be a target, whether it's a military camp, a port, a significant building, a landmark, anything that the terrorist would love to blow up, um, you are 
a target yourself because you live too close to that area and you need to deal with that. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone should get up and move and, and try to live in uh, areas that no one wants to live in. Uh, however, there are certain things you can do. And the number one thing I think that the tip of, the, of all tips, if, I, if you walk away with only one tip, is gather your family on a weekend with the kids. Important to have the kids part of it. And talk about an event. What happens in case something happens? And the public probably doesn't know. The first thing that will happen after a, a, a bomb goes off, the government will shut down all communication by design. There will be no telephone lines, blackberries, cell phones, any communication. Unless you send a pigeon, you're not going to communicate with anybody. Um, that is to uh, um, prevent the terrorists from talking to each other when they run away after the event. Now, how are you going to communicate with your loved one? How are you going to report to each other that you're alive? And A or B, where do you meet? Where do we meet if we can go home? Let's assume our house is contaminated, it's bombed, it's, uh, um, and, I, and there's many, many events that you can go home. Where is the family going to meet? That's number one. Secondly, in preparation of that meeting in another location, they shouldn't be too far away from where you live, but not close enough. You need to gather every important document you have at home. Every, your passport, your life insurance policy, your birth certificate. Make a good Xerox of it. Make a few copies of it. And take one copy of all those documents, place it in an envelope, and place that envelope with someone that you're going to designate as a meeting point, a relative, a friend, somebody in a different town. And the family will meet there, and you have something to start your life again. So you're saying you basically get together, you have the plan, so that if communications...